Acts chapter 20. When the uproar had ended, Paul sent for the disciples and after encouraging them, said goodbye and set out for Macedonia. He traveled through that area. He's talking about Greece. He traveled through that area, speaking many words of encouragement to the people and finally arrived in Greece. Macedonia was an area that was a, that was around and a part of Greece. Whenever it says Macedonia, it's essentially the same area where he stayed three months because some Jews had plotted against him just as he was about to sail for Syria. He decided to go back through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Sopatar, son of Phaedrus from Beria, Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, Timothy also, Tychicus and Tropimus from the province of Asia. Basically, he had a crew that was going with him preaching the gospel all throughout these regions. Those men went on ahead and waited for us at Troas, but we sailed from Philippi after the festival of unleavened bread and five days later joined the others at Troas where we stayed seven days. All right, now at verse seven, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. He was a little bit long-winded of a preacher. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus possibly, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. Paul kept on preaching and he basically fell asleep during the message. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He'll be alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke and ate bread. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Paul basically preached for so long that a young man fell asleep during his sermon. He was sitting on a balcony or on a window edge and he fell out three stories and he died. Paul came down, prayed over him, miraculously raised him from the dead and said, it's okay, let's go in and eat. I think that's enough of the message for today. Basically, Paul would say, verse 13, Paul's farewell to the Ephesian elders. We went on ahead to the ship and sailed for Assos, where we were going to take Paul aboard. He made this arrangement because he was going there on foot. When he met us at Assos, we took him aboard and went on to Mytilene. The next day, we set sail from there and arrived at Chios. The day after that, we crossed over to Samos and on the following day at Miletus. Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia, for he was in a hurry to reach Jerusalem, if possible, by the day of Pentecost. They were traveling from city to city, sharing the gospel, checking on the churches that they had started. Verse 17, from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I lived the whole time while I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia. I served the Lord with great humility and with tears and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything That would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. He said, I have been in the churches. I've been in the small groups. I've declared to both the Jews and the Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've told everyone they have to look to Jesus. They can't do it their way. They've got to do it God's way. And now verse 22. I'm compelled by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Verse 25, now I know that none of you among whom I have gone out about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. He says, I know I'm not gonna see you again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought with his own blood. Basically, he says, I'm not coming back. I'm leaving you in authority here. You are responsible. I'm not responsible for you anymore. I've done all I can. You're gonna have to do this on your own now. You were raised up for such a time as this. You're called to lead God's people and God's church in this city. And he says, listen, watch out. Verse 29, I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. People will come in trying to pull people away from the church, trying to lead people astray. When I leave, people are gonna try to come in and test you. Verse 30, even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after themselves. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning you, each of you, night and day with tears. 
Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or anything. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the need of my companions. He says, look, I worked for everything I got. I didn't take anything from you. I didn't do this with a wrong spirit or a wrong attitude. He says, I'm warning you with a loving heart. Verse 35, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the wards that Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive because when I give, I have overflow. But when I receive, it means that I'm in need. I'm more blessed when I'm able to be a blessing to you. Verse 36, and we'll close with these. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept and they embraced and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him down to the ship. It was time for him to go. His journey into that area was complete. He knew that God had called him onto something new. He would go to Jerusalem and eventually he would travel to Rome where he would write the many letters, the epistles to the church, and eventually he would give his life for the glory of Jesus Christ. It's a sad moment, but it's a beautiful moment as Paul would set in these leaders and tell them that God's raised you up for this time. Be prepared. There's a calling on your life and God's gonna use you in a mighty way. Be blessed today.